Yeah, it's me again. Well, you're probably wondering what happened to my last broadcast. Um, well, it seems that because of certain little bits of electronic gadgetry in the car, I was able to be jammed by somebody outside um, of the Indy car. So, uh, my last broadcast got a bit garbled, so I'm hoping that this one will not be interfered with. You'll know if it is straight away because the sound will start to break up again. So I'm trying a little test just to see if anybody at five has noticed where I am now, see if they've been following me around today. Anyway, you can't silence the truth, and once people see the truth, it's very difficult to kind of stuff it back in a bottle again. Uh, I mentioned this morning that the BBC in Scotland anyway has, has virtually stopped even trying to, uh, to give us any news. It's basically just, Scotland's a crap place to live. That's the news today. Not even going to get any weather or traffic report, just a nice depressing headline. That's pretty depressing living in Scotland. It's all awful and really that's about the size of it. So I'm not even bothering to give us news anymore because they know nobody's listening. And my report this morning that um, Martin Geisler uh, was planning to, or we hear is planning to leave the, uh, the new nine o'clock news over at Pacific Key. It shows that there's a great deal of uh, unhappiness at the BBC, whose 9 o'clock news uh, viewing figures dropped to about 4,000 recently, and I know for a fact that most of the posts that I make, uh, like this, will get more than 4,000 views each day. In fact, most of the time they get somewhere between 10 and 20,000 views a day, so I'm already, you know, double on what the, the 9 o'clock news from Pacific Key is getting, which is very nice to know. It's nice to know that my figures are increasing while theirs are going down. However, uh, back to the case in point, I wanted to finish what I had tried to, to say earlier on about Nigel Farage and Brexit and what's going on at the moment. So if you can imagine this for a moment, you know, you've got your two-party political system in London and they accidentally uh, have this Brexit uh, campaign and they accidentally have a Brexit vote which says that people want to leave the European Union and they weren't expecting it. So this bombshell basically blows the whole of British politics up and covers the entire country with fudge that nobody can move in because first of all the politicians never wanted Brexit, only Farage wants Brexit uh, and a few others but the fact is that Brexit is something that the British government does not want to have happen. The Labour Party didn't particularly want it to happen either, and the Lib Dems definitely didn't want it to happen. So none of the political establishment wanted Brexit to happen. We also, I mean, we're pretty sure that the SNP and the Greens never wanted it to happen at all. But here is the thing, that the populist vote in England wants Brexit. They want to leave the European Union because they think it will stop immigrants coming and taking their jobs or they think there's too many immigrants coming over in the first place and they're using up all the uh, public services. Which is odd because the public services have really just been cut by the very people they voted uh, to run the country. The Tories, the Tories have cut the police force by 40% in the last 10 years. So when crime goes nuts and there's a, an outbreak of murder and stabbings, you can't really be surprised when you voted for a party that cut the police force. But anyway, the point is that Brexit, such as it is, is the ultimate catch-22 because the Tories don't have enough votes now because nobody wants to vote for them. The Brexit party, which is this non-existent paper party that Nigel Farage has just invented, is now more popular than the Tories themselves. And if there was an election, Farage would pick up at least 50 seats, according to the, the polling, which means that Labour would have the majority, not not a majority in Parliament, but they would be the biggest party with over 300 seats. The Tories with something like 160 seats and Farage with about 50. And of course the SNP with about 54 would be a major player as well. So who would hold the balance of power if Labour tried to form some kind of government? It would either be Farage or it would be the SNP and possibly their allies in Plaid and their allies in the Green Party. So the SNP could be the kingmakers, they could be the ones who um, form a kind of government with the Labour Party, but they could exact a really high price for that, and the price of course would probably be 
a Section 30 order that would allow the Scots to vote on whether they wanted to end the Union at this point. It doesn't solve the problem of Brexit though, so even if Theresa May were to resign uh, or there was a general election called and it was held, the likelihood is that Labour would be the largest party and would try to form a minority government. They couldn't really do much of a deal with Farage because Farage just wants out of the EU at any cost and he's not really concerned about the, the damage it would do. In fact, he said he's not. And Anne Whittacombe has said it would be as bad as World War II, so that's all right then. But I can't imagine Farage and Labour sitting down together and forming some kind of coalition to take us out of the European Union. It would be bizarre to say the least. And nobody in their right mind actually voted for that when they, in England, wanted Brexit. They didn't want the Labour Party in. They certainly didn't want Jeremy Corbyn to be uh, some kind of minister in a, a Labour government. The whole thing is a nasty mess. It is literally a great big sea of fudge in which the major parties are paddling around but unable to move. They're stuck in this mire. Brexit could go on for decades the way it's going at the moment. Nobody can agree anything. The talks with the Labour Party and the Tories at the moment are stalled. Labour wants um, to make a deal where they have some kind of customs uh, arrangement with the EU. They also want it to go to another public referendum, in other words, to have the public confirm that that's what they actually want. The Tories dead set against that. The Tories dead set against a permanent customs union. I can't see how anybody can possibly agree to anything in England at the moment <clears throat> in Westminster politics because the two-party system has been smashed to pieces. It's lying in little bits on the floor. The Tories, 16%, for goodness sake. The Labour Party's on, what, about 20-something percent? Farage's party, uh, about 23%. Labour and Farage are, are, are about the same. The Lib Dems have actually taken the Tories' place. The Tories are now in fifth place in the popularity stakes. The, the European elections coming up at the moment are almost meaningless as far as England is concerned because they want out of the, the European Union. To Scotland they're very important because we want to send a message that Scotland is a European country and it's going to stay that way no matter what England does. So we're hoping to win at least three SNP seats and maybe one Labour seat and try to shut out the Tories and the Brexit parties completely if possible. But the way the system works in Europe perhaps would allow uh, a Brexit party member to get a seat north of the border, which is a bizarre, you know, a bizarre situation, but there you have it. But whatever happens, it's not going to be good. Nothing is going to be good. Unless Brexit is actually stopped right now, nothing good can happen to Scotland or anywhere else in the United Kingdom. So, to me at least, there is no real need now uh, to hold back on this new um, Scottish referendum on independence because nobody is going to move. I mean, if the if the SNP is waiting for a general election and for Labour to win, and then they're going to you know strike a deal with Labour, that could take years to happen. The Labour Party is mild in confusion. It also disagrees with itself. It disagrees with its own leader. It disagrees with its own membership. Its membership disagrees with the national executive, and so it goes on. Nobody in England can agree on anything. The entire political system is broken in bits on the floor and is completely moribund. It's unable to act. Even people like Jeremy Hunt, the so-called foreign... Is he the defence secretary or the foreign secretary? I can't remember. They've all changed jobs so many times. There have been over 40 sackings and res resignations from this government already in the past two years. It's not really a government, it, it is it's a series of politicians going through a revolving door while the country basically tears itself apart. I don't want to be part of that chaos anymore and as far as I'm concerned we need to be pitching Scotland as the stable place to live in the United Kingdom, the only place that has political stability and we cannot let anybody in Scotland upset that apple cup because this stability we have now is largely due to the SNP keeping a tight control over fiscal policy and also making sure that all of the services that we like, that we take for granted, that we're happy to pay for out of our tax money, continue to exist. 
but there is always a risk of being dragged down with the Brexit ship because we never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. At the moment, all we know is that Labour and the Tories are in a basically in a, a mud wrestling competition over Brexit just now. Nobody really cares who wins, but the two opponents are just covered in, in mud and <laughs> sliding around all over the place. Nobody's going to emerge a clear winner. Uh, as far as the Liberal Democrats are concerned, well, we've had Guy Verhofstadt come over from Europe and he is the head of the Liberal Democratic part of the European uh, Parliament. So he's campaigning with the Lib Dems for us to stay inside the EU. And that's pumped up the Liberal Democrats' uh, profile in the press recently. Farage is ranting on the television uh, about just wanting to get out of uh, of the EU and he is very belligerent about the way the BBC has been apparently attacking him and trying to get him to um, retract some of his previous comments or at least explain some of his more bizarre comments in the past and of course he doesn't want to revisit that because they're too embarrassing. It's an utter pig's breakfast at the moment and in the middle of all of this we've got the British civil servants and the establishment attempting to smear SNP politicians who are held in the highest regard in Westminster and who are amongst the best debaters that we have. Uh, Joanna Cherry and, uh, and Chris Law, for example, Th these people are, are basically living muck thrown at them at the moment in an effort to make them look bad. I tell you something, it's not, it's not difficult to look good in London at the moment because virtually everybody else in every other party looks bad just now. My uh, concern at the moment is for us up here that we finally get some idea of when our independence is going to be voted upon. Nicola Sturgeon said yesterday, now is the time for independence. Well, yeah it is, so what are you going to do about it Nicola? This is the time for independence. The United Kingdom is never going to be as messy and as broken up and disunited and weakened as it is now. If we don't have a vote sometime this year, uh, then I think we'll have lost the momentum that we built up. I've been saying this all along. I mean, there's a point where things cannot get much worse in politics. If we wait until Brexit actually happens, we could all be very, very old by then. And we could keep waiting because the British government will not have Brexit if it thinks it's going to lose Scotland. And so they will keep kicking the can down the road, delaying it another month, another year, another two years. The European Union seems to be allowing them to do this at the moment. The question in my mind is, what the hell is the European Union thinking, giving the United Kingdom such a long lead time to mess about and cuddle around? I mean, are they hoping that the UK is going to eventually relent and have a referendum and have the people say, actually, we've changed our minds, it's not such a good idea after all? I don't know, but it's a mess at the moment, and frankly, I would like to get out of this mess. And I'm fed up even having to think about it or talk about it. It's the biggest turn-off politically that there's ever been in the UK. It's not surprising people don't want to talk about Brexit. It's an utter fiasco, and it has been ever since it began. Uh, and the fact that it's being allowed to continue beggars belief. There's no other country on the face of the earth can understand why the United Kingdom is doing this to itself. Uh, it's all very well to say, well, it was a reaction to the fact that people were not being listened to by their politicians. But if that's the case, why are people not organising a new political party that does listen to them? Because that's the obvious answer to this. Rather than trying to take yourself out of the European Union just to say, I'm doing this because I don't like you, not the European Union, but the Tories and the, the, the Labour Party. Instead of saying, we're going to leave the, the EU because you guys can't run the country properly, why not just form a new party that can run the country properly and one that does do the things that people want it to do? Because the, pro the problem at the moment is the fact that the parties have failed uh, and they've allowed Brexit to happen. The people have had a go at the, the government and instead of the government saying, look, we're really sorry, we, we completely screwed up the economy and the whole country, we want to do things differently, but we'll have to, we'll have to call Brexit off to do it. But no, there's not been any admission of that. Basically, the British government and the, the Labour Party and all the rest of the establishment have got their heads in the sand. They're saying, 
oh well, you know, it's just one of those things. People were just having a, a rant, you know, they're just reacting and they're just kicking back against the, poli the politicians. Frankly, these, these politicians aren't worth the space that they take up. Anybody with a brain should be thinking ahead and not only capitalising on the situation, but giving these people who voted Brexit as a protest an actual party that they can get behind, not Farage. Farage is leading us off the cliff. He's the chief lemming here. Farage has nothing to lose by leaping off the cliff uh, out of the European Union because Farage, let's face it, is a millionaire. He's got loads of money. He made millions out of the Brexit uh, campaign because he, he was posting that it wasn't going to happen, it wasn't going to happen. So people bet against it happening and he cleaned up, he made a fortune and so did all his buddies who also bet uh, against it. So, you know, who are you going to believe? Frankly, I would, I'm glad I live in Scotland, I'm, I'm really glad I'm not English or Welsh at the moment. I, I, mean, I mean that with some compassion because English and Welsh people have just been totally abandoned by the politicians and left to, to pick up the pieces of this enormous catastrophe that the political class has constructed out of nothing, out of thin air, because they weren't listening to the people that voted them in. And I'm talking about Conservative voters, Labour voters, Lib Dems, anybody in England who voted for these parties uh, has basically been let down by their own parties. Maybe it's time that not a Brexit party was formed, but a, a British People's Party was formed so that those people in England have got somebody uh, that they can vote for when it comes to a general election. Get rid of the Tories, get rid of Labour and form a new party that represents the bulk of the population in England. In Scotland we have that here, it's called the Scottish National Party and they represent the majority of us here. You need a party like that in England, that's what's wrong. Wales has got Plaid Cymru, which is growing in strength at the moment. And this, the idea of nationalism is a bad thing. It's just a hangover from what the Nazis did with that particular word. Think of yourself not so much as a, a nationalist. I think of myself as a nationist, somebody who wants to build a nation, not somebody who wants to shut folk out on the basis of race, but somebody who wants to welcome people in on the basis of helping us to build a better country and a more open country. That is what's wrong at the moment with the whole of the UK. Scotland has got a party which is actually unfortunately named, they should rename it, the Scottish Nation Party, because we're not nationalists, we are nationists, we're nation builders. And we have to get that across to people on the doorsteps. We're not here to destroy the Union. We're here to build the nation back up. And that is something which is positive. We're not here just to end the Union. We're here to renegotiate a new treaty with hopefully a newly independent England. That way, we all get what we want. We all get back control of what we want. We get power back in our own parliaments. And we still deal with each other in a friendly way. Right at the moment, England lacks that and it needs it. Scotland, we've got it. We've also got the Green Party, which is going to become a much bigger force in Scotland after independence than it is now. Because the Green Party is going to be the party that pushes the Green Agenda forward and changes the whole economic, uh, social and environmental direction that Scotland takes. So the Green Party is going to be vital, but not just yet. Its time is yet to come, but it's coming soon. Anyway, I've got to go and do some work now, but I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow. Hopefully, the sound has not been broken up on this broadcast, and I look forward to seeing you later in the week. Bye-bye.